Hi everyone and welcome to the garden. Today we're looking at one of the most fast growing and imposing tropical looking plants that you can grow from seed for your summer tropical garden this year and that's ricinus. If you're not familiar with them then ricinus they're a tender annual plant which means generally speaking you grow them from seed in spring April's actually a great month for these. So some plants you need to start early in the year, but ricinus to grow that fast and they need that much light that in reality you're better off sowing them in April. You'll still get big plants by the middle of May and over summer they can get to heights two and a half, maybe even three meters tall. So you get a lot of plant for your money, which again seems to be a theme in recent videos. They sort of look like a cross between a Fatsia and a Tetrapanax. So they're a really tall stem with these massive leaves in all kinds of different bright greens, purples, and sort of bluey shades. They're a very impressive plant and they're very, very easy to grow from seed. The one that you should absolutely try this year, especially if you don't have a huge amount of money to spend on your tropical garden. Before I look at the practicalities then of how to actually grow ricinus from seed and a few growing tips for the summer months, I just want to talk more generally about the plant. And the first thing that needs to be mentioned is that the seeds and all parts of the plant are actually toxic. So you might be aware of this when you get a packet of ricinus seeds that it says on it, you know, poisonous, do not eat, and absolutely follow that advice. Although the seeds look tempting and they've got beautiful little patterns on them, don't eat them, it's, it's not a joke, they are really poisonous. The poison ricin actually comes from them. So they've got the potential to be dangerous. And on a more serious note, if you've got kids that like picking up plants in your garden and eating them, firstly you should probably address that, but if you've got kids that might eat them or pets that like to eat plants, then I probably wouldn't grow them. There's other plants that you can grow, such as your tetrapanax and your fatsia, to get a similar sort of look in a bit more time. But if you do want to grow them, then obviously inform your kids about the dangers, maybe grow them at the back of a border, and when it comes to the back end of the season, so mid-autumn, and you start to see the seed pods appear, I'd chop those off, because in reality, those are gonna be the most tempting bit when they drop onto the ground for pets or children to pick up. So that's just the first little warning out of the way. Now onto the actual plants themselves. So ricinus, they're a fantastic plant, and they're a really big part of my summer tropical bedding scheme. So I can grow them every year, which is great because it means you don't have to store them over winter. You can just plant them from the seeds in April and you don't have to worry about them in winter. You just let the frost cut them down. You might get away with them surviving in really mild areas like in the middle of London, but in reality, the frost will take them down and it's not a problem. Just leave it to it, compost them, job done for the year. You don't need to worry about overwintering them. So from that respect, they're nice and easy. And the second thing is that the height they create. So height is a valuable thing in any kind of garden, especially in a tropical garden, because it really makes you feel immersed in that jungle effect. So the fact that you can grow a plant from seed in April and get it to be two and a half, three meters tall by the end of summer, early autumn, for me, it's just incredible. And it lets you experiment a bit, really. So you might decide that you want to have tall plants in an area. You can try a few ricinus there this year and see if it becomes a little bit overwhelming or if it's exactly the kind of jungle that you want to create. So they're great for an experimental tropical border. You can plant these, change it all around next year if you want, or maybe even put more in. Completely up to you. In terms of varieties, my absolute favourites are Purple Giant, which gets to maybe five, six feet tall, and it's got a real nice purple metallic sheen to the leaves. They don't grow quite as tall as the green and blue varieties, but they're still an imposing plant in themselves, and I like to grow them as groups to really exaggerate that foliage effect. The purple leaves work really well as a contrast to the banana plants, the ancetes, cannas, colocasias. They just work so well with those kind of tropical plants. And the other variety that I would really recommend is Blue Giant. Now, you can get a few big ricinus plants, but Blue Giant I found to be reliably the one that grows the best for me. And last year, or maybe the year before at the old house, I actually got them over three meters tall, which I don't know why I'm putting my hand up because it's taller than my hand. They get absolutely massive. The actual stem of them gets to maybe 40, 50 mil across, really woody. And to get such a plant like that from a seed, you know, it's absolutely incredible. And if you're fairly new to tropical gardening, the closest plant to them, I'd say, is like a sunflower. So if you imagine a sunflower, but with massive, exotic, tropical-looking leaves, then you've got it right down. Rice is a fantastic plant, and I just want to look now at how to go in from seed this year. So if you're looking for rice and seeds this year, then I tend to get most of mine from jungle seeds, and I should really stop mentioning that because I'll be out of stock when I come to get them next year. 
but in reality you can actually harvest the seeds from your rice and this plants this year to save for next year. So jungle seeds have got a good range, they stock them all from the smaller varieties which grow up to about four or five feet tall right up to the giants. So depending on the space you've got and the look you want to create there is a riceness out there for you and there's such a variety of colours as well. So jungle seeds have got a good range and also a place like Chilton seeds stock them. And what you find is each plant actually produces quite a few seeds, so they're not a seed that's really in short supply. And like I said, as they grow so fast, they're a great seed choice for beginners if you're looking to go your first tropical garden this summer. So when you first get your rice nest and you open the packet up, first thing you'll notice is just how beautiful the seeds are. They've got these really nice swirly patterns on them, almost like little sweets, but again, don't eat them, it's not worth it. You'll tend to get around maybe five or ten seeds more likely in a packet, which is obviously enough to grow a small forest of these plants and enough to create a really impressive display this year. So when you look at the back of the packet, you'll see that it often says they need high temperatures to germinate and you can soak them for 24 hours before planting them. Now, if you're someone who likes to follow instructions to a T, then what you might find is that as you grow them at high temp or germinate them at high temperatures, it does produce better results and produces faster results. And likewise, if you want to soak them for 24 hours, it just helps break down that hard shell a little bit so they germinate even faster. But what I found in my experience is that neither of these is actually essential and they will germinate quite easily just on a windowsill. This year, I've actually got a propagator base. I haven't got the top in it, but I'm just using it to create a bit of heat and I've actually planted some about a week and a half ago, maybe just a week ago actually, so I had some for this video. I'll just show you one of those now. So this is a plant that I actually sowed from a seed just over a week ago and as you can see it's already started growing. And um, One thing you might notice is already the height of it. So this is the problem with sowing riceness too early. There's no right or wrongs and I think a lot of people think that gardening is too scientific and it's a very precise you must do this, you must do that. It definitely isn't. There's room for experimentation and in reality it's a massive grey area and you can get away with a lot of things. But Really, if you haven't sown them yet, April is the time to do it. They grow so fast that they need a lot of light, otherwise they get too leggy, too lanky, and the seeds end up flopping over. So what you really want is a good, strong plant that's ready to plant outside once the frosts are finished. So in reality, for us here in North Lincolnshire, it means you can't plant them outside until maybe early May, maybe the second week in May. It might change depending on where you are. If you live in London or somewhere more mild, maybe late April, the first week in May. But as this spring has shown us, it can be really unpredictable. So really, you want to think from that date backwards. So if the seeds grow this fast in a single week from germination, then you don't want the plant that's gonna to get to three or four foot tall inside your house. You won't have room for it on your windowsill. It won't get enough light and it will get lanky. So that's the main reason that I recommend starting them in April a bit later on. By all means, if you've got grow lights, if you've got a proper propagator set up, I think I said that all right, then you can start them earlier, but you don't need to, and they will still get big plants from an April sowing. So what I did with these, I actually, know, if you notice, I use a single pot. And riceness are a plant that because they grow so quickly, so tall, and germinate so reliably, I tend to just put one or maybe two seeds in a single pot rather than growing them in a seed tray. And that way, I'm not disturbing the roots to separate them up. In general, growing in seed trays works really well for small seeds where you can just sprinkle a lot in and then you can just separate the plants a few weeks later. But riceness, I tend to go single pots. You can maybe even go bigger than this, go to a two litre, and you know then that that plant's got enough soil to grow right until the point where it's ready to be planted out. In reality, a proper seed compost is best, but they're not fussy plants and they will germinate quite readily, even in a multi-purpose or even garden soil if that's all that you've got. They're a very easy plant to grow from seed and in a lot of countries they're just weeds. We just like them for the tropical foliage. So in that respect, they are very easy. And the only two real crucial factors are that you need enough heat just to get them going. So if you've got somewhere in your house that's warm, like an airing cupboard on a radiator, somewhere that's just got a little bit extra warmth and just room temperature that'll get them growing just a little bit faster but as soon as they've germinated and as soon as that plant's actually started to unfurl then you need to have it somewhere bright so a windowsill is ideal these are plants that will take full sun and the danger of them not having enough light is that they do get lanky a bit leggy you just want good strong plants that have got access to plenty of light 
So care of your riceness then, once they get to this point, is actually really straightforward. And it's just a case of keeping them in that bright light and keeping them well watered. So you don't want them to be sat in water, but you don't want the compost to properly dry out either, because that will slow them down a bit. So it's really just a case, there's nothing more to it than just keeping them watered. You don't need to give them additional feed. Pretty much any kind of compost, even a seed compost, has got enough feed to get them going for that first few weeks or month or two even, until they're ready to go outside. And what I'll personally do here is get them to a certain height and then move them into a polytunnel. So if you've got a polytunnel or a greenhouse, then maybe the middle of April onwards is a great time just to give them an extra boost, get them used to the sunlight, but obviously you're not fully exposed to the outdoor conditions yet and temperatures below zero. You could even use one of those little uh, cheap polythene greenhouses you can pick up from supermarkets, anything works. But all I'd say is with something like that, if there are freezing temperatures forecast, then just move your plants back inside because they won't like that at all. But in reality, early May is when you want to be planting these out. And um, what I do for about a week beforehand is just move the seeds or move the plants at that point to somewhere sheltered. So it's called hardening off, but there's nothing fancy about it. It's basically just gradually increasing the exposure of these plants to the outdoor elements. So if they've been grown inside, then obviously they've got thinner stems, they won't have been used to wind battering them, the harsh sunlight, all kinds of the things that will get used to outside. So you just need to slowly introduce them to that and somewhere a bit shaded, a bit sheltered from the, like the strong winds is really the best way to do it. And it only needs to be for a week or so and by that point they'll very quickly become used to it and they can then be planted out wherever you want it in your garden. Personally, I would go for the back of the border just because they get to a, a very decent height so you don't want them shadowing over something at the front and it's one of the mistakes I made at our old house in the first year when I planted the border up is that I put too many tall plants in. Now I know it's not a thing, it shouldn't be a thing but I did it and it, it just lost that look. So one thing I found really is that to create a border that really looks apart you need to have that mix of tall, medium, small, not necessarily in that order but you do want some kind of structure to the bed. I actually did a full video looking at when the best time is to plant out your tropical plants but for riceness in particular it's generally when you're confident that the last frosts have finished for your area so like i said for us here in north lincolnshire it tends to be the first or second week in may but what i do i generally keep an eye on the weather all the time but when it comes to that first week i just look ahead in the weather app see what the next two weeks are and if there's any nighttime lows around four degrees or less then I generally hold off because it's at those temperatures that frost can occur. But if it all looks clear and you're above four degrees, then you're generally set to go. And even if it is four degrees, I usually just chance it anyway, fingers crossed it works out fine. So when it comes to actually planting your riceness, there's nothing more to it other than decide a spot. You might want to put them at the back of your border because they grow really tall, or you might want a few as feature plants near the front, completely up to you. Just dig a hole, big enough for your pot, plant this plant in the ground, and then pack the soil back down around it with your hands and give it a good watering. There's nothing more to it than that. It doesn't need to be any more complicated. But there's a few things that you can do to improve its growth. And the first of those things actually starts before you plant it out. And that is to improve the quality of the soil. So all these tropical effects plants, like the riceness, the bananas, cannas, colocasias, they all enjoy a really rich soil. And rich means full of nutrients. And the best thing you can do at this time of year is either mulch that soil with something like a farmyard manure that you can pick up in bags from di well, DIY department stores, from garden centres, or you can add garden compost to soil. You can dig it in if you want or just leave it on the top. But anything that you can add to soil like that now really helps to create that rich soil with a good structure so the plants can get the roots into it easier and get so much more nutrients to actually grow throughout the summer. And the next thing is, once the plant's settled in and you're happy that it's grown away, is really keep on top of your watching and feeding. Now, riceness, they are tough plants, and unless they're planting pure clay that absolutely dries out during a drought, they're reasonably tough and resistant to, they don't need a lot of water, they can get by in a small amount. But if you want those massive leaves, especially on the blue giant, if you want those really big leaves like tetrapanax and that massive height, then you need to give them what they want. So if you keep on top of your watering throughout summer, every time the soil looks a bit dry or if it's not rained for a week or so, give them a good soak in and I generally feed them with liquid seaweed. I feed all my big leaf tropical plants with that and it works really well. 
I tend to avoid the synthetic fertilizers unless I'm growing plants in pots, but another top one is chicken manure pellets. And with those, you can sprinkle them on and they generally last around a month or so, and they keep dripping those nutrients through to the plant so they grow strongly all through the summer. So there we go then, ricinus. They're a plant you can grow from seed, they're really inexpensive, so if you spend maybe three or four pounds in a packet of seed, you can potentially get 10 plants. They germinate reliably and they're very easy to grow. You can start them late, so if you've only just come to tropical gardening and you want to grow something that will get to these heights this year, you don't need to be mega patient for it, then ricinus is the plant for you. If you want a colourful variety, then I'd stick with maybe Carmen Zeta for the really bright flowers, they've got lovely leaves, maybe the purple giant as well because they're just fantastic, they work so well with all the banana plants, with the colocasias, and they're really tying with the purples or some daily leaves. And if you want the absolute giants, then Blue Giant is a great one, and Zanzi Barensis gets absolutely massive with leaves just like a Tetrapanax. So they're a great plant, they grow really quickly, and you get a lot of leaf for very little money. What more could you want? If you've got any more questions or there's anything that I haven't addressed in this video, then just leave me a comment below. But if not, get straight out there, go to Jungle Seeds, go to Chilton Seeds, buy some ricinus and get them growing this year. Thanks for watching.